Today, for the first time ever, we are going to cast a free-for-all game for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06 on the beautiful map Mirkwood. It's a 1v1v1v1. One 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 one. Everyone is playing for himself. At the bottom right side, we have Isengard. Bottom left, Rohan. And top left and top right, we have Gondor. So two Gondors, one Rohan and one Isengard. And that's going to be absolute fiesta, by the way. And if you guys enjoy this free-for-all games, I can even cast more games for you guys in the future. So let me know in the comment section down below. I could also be playing myself free-for-all game. Which is kind of quite fiesta, you know? You know what I'm saying? Because everybody is able to fight against each other. Which means non-stop action all the time. The problem here for the Isengard player is that he's the only player who has no walls around the base. While we have Rohan and two Gondors involved. That means Isengard potentially is going to be the target from multiple players at the same time. <laughs> and that's going to be kind of a nightmare for the Isengard player. But luckily... He will this way be able to get lots of power points at least. And Balrog is a game winning point. Balrog is able to kill the entire base of Gondor or Rohan in no time. And also, if you're wondering why Mirkwood, Mirkwood is simple because the bases are actually quite far away from each other. And every base, every player has at least one farm, one settlement he can keep for the majority of the time protected by building one single tower. You can see that. Two farms, three farms coming up for Rohan. On the other side, we see two furnaces, three furnaces. He's going to build now one tower to protect this, but it might be a little bit too late. He was using his Urukai to creep. They're almost level two. Urukai is the only swordman in the game who will not get level two from creeping one single goblin layer, while peasants, oryx, and also soldiers of Gondor can get one full rank. He's trying to repair this with the Lumber Mill workers, and the tower is actually still able to reach them, and I believe he will be able to keep this mill protected. And of course, the playstyle is a bit different in free-for-all games. You don't need to get units on the field very early. You can actually save for the lords. Because in this kind of game type, you will get the money a bit faster. That means we, you can get lords on the field in no time. We have also four statues coming up for the Rohan player. He might go for the hero spam. The statue is giving you the hero bonus, which is going to make your heroes a bit cheaper. Actually, 30% discount. Aragorn, Gimli and Legolas. They will be, of course, way, way cheaper this way. On the other side, this Gondor player is getting Faramir on the field. And this Gondor player is doing the same. So no Gondor Knights yet. Faramir was already able to creep one of the layers. He's almost level 4. Remember, Faramir and Boromir, they are entering the battlefield by being rank 3 already. And once Faramir is level 5, he will be also unlocking the uh, leadership, which is going to give armor for the nearby allied units. If also Lords on the field is a counter hero, and Lords can kill any other hero pretty much in no time once he's level 3. He has level 1 cripple, and with level 3 he will unlock the carnage. This combination is pretty deadly, because you can cripple them first, and then use your sword, and use carnage. And then you can kill even Legolas in a one-on-one -on -one situation in literally no time. And if he gets the creep, by the way, fully, and that also includes the two Vargs around the creep, in the layer itself, he will be level 3 already. And that's again a massive power spike for the hero from Isengard. Parami is also creeping at the very same time, he will be level 4 after this one. And this Condor player is actually doing a phenomenal job creeping. Now he will have 1, 2, 3, 4 farms outside under his control. He has now the stable up on the field for the Gondor Knights, which are of course needed to be able to fight for the map control. On the other side, this Rohan player is saving for Legolas. And this might be a mistake, especially if he's gonna run into the Lourdes, you know? Lourdes can also use the Cripple to one-shot the Warg. He's now level 2. And when in a situation like this, what you can always do is use your Sword, because Lourdes has more melee damage than range damage. With this Sword, you can kill the Leia a bit faster. Legolas is gonna join the battlefield very, very soon. And again, he normally costs 3,000, but with four statues, he's going to cost you only 2,100. And Aragorn is going to cost you 2,450, who normally costs you 3,500 resources without the statues. If also now this table for the other Gondor player, he's going to demolish it right after the first Gondor Knight is entering the battlefield, which is quite interesting. And maybe this Gondor player uh, might try to rush for Gandalf. Does he have the power points for that? And the answer is not yet. He still needs one more power point before he can get Gandalf the Grey and turn him into the Gandalf Divide. The creep has been secured. Legolas was not able to... But he's getting some uh, Gondor Knights. Now this Lourdes is level 3, but he has Cripple on cooldown and Carnage on cooldown. It means Legolas is not... Uh, you know, doesn't need to be scared or afraid. 
If also Warcraft is now on the field from the Isengard player, he wants to actively participate in the map control fights. And for that reason, having those mobile units on the field is of course a better call. And that's more effective than you think. Look at the situation now. With the Palantir on the Warcraft, you can even outrun those Gondor Knights and catch them. All ability will give you 60% damage. And with the Warchant, you can kill those Gondor Knights in no time. Faramir is getting mounted. Looks like he will be able to save the Gondor Knight at least for now. The well is coming up for the Gondor player for the sustain. And Isengard has now 1, 2, 3 mills outside under his control. Thank you so much for the follow, appreciate that. On the Twitch channel, means a lot to me. Alright, more Warcriders are coming now. He's gonna get more, 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 eventually uh, saving the last spot for the Armory. Or he might also try to rise for Saruman. He will definitely need some more towers in his base. If he wants to be able to have a bit greater protection. Z. The Gondor player at the top left side is actually still going for Gandalf, but he needs... Oh! But how he did get this many power points? I think he killed... I think he killed Legolas, right? Let me check. Yeah, he killed Legolas. His power point was actually rising to the sky. And that's massive. Not only he was able to kill Legolas, but also he was able to save his Faramir. And now, he has the power points for the Gandalf divide. Which again is a massive thing. The peasant was able to celebrate winning the fight. Farami is opening the gate and trying once again to show his quality. And now he's also level 5, by the way, which means leadership for a nearby allied unit. But he has no units on the field right now. And he has also not a single farm outside anymore. He's going to build, uh, demolish four buildings and build statues to get a discount on Gandalf. Just like the Rohan player did at the beginning of the game. He's going to revive his uh, Legolas, of course. He has also Elmia on the field. And he might also need Aragorn and even Gimli. He's going for the Elvin next. Spear throw has been used from Elmia. He needs to be level 4 for the Horse Lord leadership to be unlocked. We have a fight. Uh, Warchant has been used on the Warc Riders. And even though they have no blades, uh, they can still win. Because Warchant is stronger than the Forge Blades. Lords on the other side is level 5. That's also massive. Has leadership unlocked now. Armory for the Forge Blades first. Banner Carry already purchased. He will also need heavy armor, of course, as well as the Fire Arrow upgrade to make, you know, because eventually Isengard player will need to trans need, need to go for a transition later on into the combo battalions. Lourdes is getting more and more power points unlocked for the Isengard player. And once he's level 7, or level 6 rather, sorry, he will be unlocking the Pillage, which means money, money, money every time he, kill he kills enemy units, which again will be happening quite often in this game. Oh, nice. Oh, double spear. Oh my goodness. Did you guys see that? The triangle. <laughs> the Rohan triangle. Like, Hulk Strike, Elvin Spear, and Elmia Spear was able to finish him off, which is massive because this way Elmia was able to get to level 4. Now he has Horse Lord, which means 60% more damage and 50% more combat experience for the nearby Rohirrim. That again is able to stack with Theodin's leadership and also Aragorn's leadership. Long story short, you can get your Rohirrim and Rohirrim Arches hit like an absolute track. Even Gandalf has to watch out. Legolas is only level 3, but once he's level 4, he can also use Train Arches on the Rohirrim Archers to get them to level 2 instantly. Industry has been chosen and used from an Isengard player. I believe he was able to get all the upgrades from the Armory, that's why he was demolishing that. The problem is, he will get outskilled. Like, Warcriders are good for early mid-game, but late-game they will fall off against Gondor Knights and also against the Rohirrim. Warchan has been used. Oh my goodness, Legolas! Legolas! The burst damage! Oh! And Legolas has been literally blown up. Spear throw from El Elvin. Gandalf is here! He's gonna catch those Warcriders. Now he's gonna cancel it. He wants to go for an Easter Light. Potentially on Elvin, because Elvin is very squishy and will be the target from Gandalf, right? Yeah, Elvin is getting one-shotted. Blown away. The Rohan player was making a mistake, in my opinion, was going for the Elvin Wood. Because Elvin Wood, let's be real, did nothing for him. He should have gone for the Anduri Sword instead to boost the damage from Aragorn. Legolas has to be revived once again, as well as Elvin. And now... Rohan has to make the transition into Rohirrim, Rohirrim Arches, and also, of course, Fire Arrow and Armory. So there is a lot of stuff Rohan player has to do. Gandalf, of course, is going to be fun to play, especially now. All you gotta do, actually, is to kinda, you know, 
Oh, never mind. That's, that's the thing you need to avoid, you know what I'm saying? You cannot run into Lourdes. But I believe he will be in a good spot because Isengard has not the army he needs to take down the Gandalf. So crippled, but no problemo. Because Warcriders can't approach him. So we have now two, Gun two Gandalfs on the field from both the Gandalf players. Very good. And this guy was also rebuilding his stable. He will also need up upgrades, of course. Forge Blades, Heavy Armor, Banner. And later on, Gonzo factions. He will also need Trebuchet to be able to break through the gate of Rohan or the other Gonzo player. That's the only way you can actually make something happen. This Isengard player will definitely need some combos. Like Uruks, especially Pikemen are very, very much needed. Against three factions who are all going for the Rohirrim, Rohirrim Arches or Gondor Knights. Your Warcriders can't approach them. Gandalf is almost level 6. Let me check the other Gandalf. He's going for a base rush. This Gandalf is almost level 6. Really close. Is that blast? Boom, son. Level 6 is unlocked. By the way, if you don't know, Warcriders are a bit more resistant to the magic damage, unlike the, unlike the Rohirrim or the Gondor Knights. So killing them is a bit harder. The Furnace is going down. The Gondor Knights, right now, they have also a lot of leadership from Faramir and Gandalf. They have 100% more armor and also... 200% uh, more combat experience. Elven Wood is going to be used to make them even stronger. Look, them shining bright like a diamond. Isengard on the other side is actually quite behind in terms of power points at least. Uh, one more Visa Plus on your face, son. <laughs> Knocking them down on the ground, getting more and more power points and experience points. Unlock for Gandalf. Level 10 is, of course, a breakpoint, which is a massive power spike for the wizard of Middle-earth. At the very same time, we have some fights going on between Rohan and Gondor on the left side. But I believe this is a bit more interesting. Lourdes is back on the field. Now Gandalf has to bail. Peel back, peel back, peel back. You cannot fight. Or you shall not fight against Lourdes. Because Lourdes is the best hero against other heroes. However, I still have the feeling that Isengard has not the army he needs to take down on Gandalf. And Lourdes can't approach him because Easter Light is able to burst him, you know? Not from 100 to 0. But what you can do is Easter Light him and then use Warning Arrow from Faramir. That's going to be enough to kill Lourdes from 100 to 0 in like two seconds now we have archers on the field the reason why they are level three is simple because legolas was using three archers on them you have also rohirrim archers now by arrow purchase now you can demolish the building and build the armory instead because he has no heavy armor yet right no he has no heavy armor yet he needs to still build the armory and buy the upgrade that's a lot of money he needs to invest but look at them shining bright like a diamond do you see that they have elmia leadership the rohirrim archers they have also aragorn and theorin so in total, right now, they have 50% from Theorin, 60 from <laughs> Eomi, and 50 from Aragorn. That's 160% damage, uh, damage leadership for the Rohirrim Archers, which is massive. Like, long story short, if you have like three Rohirrim Archers with this much leadership, you can actually, you know, burst down Gandalf in like two seconds. So Gandalf has to be extremely careful. He's almost level 6. Uh, the other Gandalf, by the way, is almost level 7 already. Uh, he's gonna miss that, right? Yeah, he's gonna miss the lightning swap, but it's okay. Again, guys, you can see yourself that following up the action, because there is lots of action going on at the same time, is kind of difficult. <laughs> As we have, like, everybody fighting against everybody. This Rohan is just skilling, trying to get stronger and stronger. He's getting some more Rohirrim matches on the field. And the good thing about Elmir is that he has the Outlaw leadership, which means money, money, money every time you kill enemy units. And especially when you kill heroes like Gandalf or Faramir, you will get... Rewarded big time. You will grow rich eventually. Look, the farm. You also get money from killing the farm, by the way. Watch this. Uh, it doesn't show. But Aomir will also give you money for killing enemy structures. Lourdes um, is here. He has a bunch of war riders, but he has to finally go for the transition into something stronger than that. Saruman is going to be recruited next. So we will have not one, not two, but three wizards of Middle-earth on the field at the very same time. This Gondor, in the meantime, is building uh, the workshop for the trebuchet. He has now four of them on the field. The, the Siege Works is level 2 for the, for the Firestone upgrade. And this Condor has to do the same though. Because you will need uh, Siege Weapons in this game. He's trying to kill Faramir. Faramir is getting blown up. But Gandalf! 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 There we go. What a juicy and beautiful Wizard Blast. And he will get away, right? Oh, Spear Throws are coming. Hawk Strike is coming. But it looks like he will get away. Heal was used. Now, without heal, this Gondor plane has to be careful. So he's now level 7. Eowyn, why, you are, why are you dismounted? Eomir is the brother from Eowyn, of course. And uh, where is Theorin? Did he lose him? No, no, he's still around. Aragorn is also around. Does not have the Anduri Sword yet. Because he has not the power points for that. 
So it was kind of unfortunate for Rohan because he was almost able to kill Farami and almost able to kill Gandalf, but, you know, close is not close enough. Saruman and Lord side by side. Lots of war riders on the field. I wish there would be also Sharku in Battle for Middle Earth 1. It would be kind of crazy because it would op open like a full different strategy for Isengard. As for now, Isengard in 99% of the cases is kind of forest. Oh! What is Gandalf doing? He's getting crippled down, but can he take him down? Does he have heal? Let me check. Yeah, he has heal from the spellbook. Fireball! Heal! Oh, the heal lag! But he was able to kill Saruman, so both wizards are going down at the same time. The Gondor player was a little bit too late with the heal. The fireball actually hurt him big time, my dude. That's not the film, Max Smart. In the films, Gandalf was just, you know, are you even trying, bro? Because you guys remember the scene, right? When in the... In Isengard, uh, when Saruman was using the fireball on Gandalf, he was getting the shield bubble to protect him against any kind of damage, but that's not the case in Battle for Middle-earth 1, in the video game. We have now Rohan moving on to the Isengard, which is the right call, because that's the easiest way you can get power points unlocked. Kill some structures, kill some units, kill some ballistas, and you're good to go. So now, Max has to, of course, revive his Gandalf, which will cost him lots of time and also lots of money, this Gandalf in the meantime is healing up. He's also now building this workshop for himself, for more trebuchet. Armory is finally upon the field for the heavy armor. Rohirrim archers have so much leadership rights now. Isengard actually went for the Tainted Land. Now, hear me out. Freezing Rain in this matchup doesn't do much for you because normally there will be so many lands on the ground and you can just go on any enemy land and then just walk off again and you will get your leadership back just like that. You know what I'm saying? So Freezing Rain not very effective. He was able to cripple down Aragorn. Lord is running for his life. Aragorn has no under his sword, which is, of course, a massive power spike if he gets that. He will be able to kill some ballistas. Rohir matches are taking so much damage. Oh, Warchan has been used on the Warcriders. Now they are shining bright like a diamond as well. Aragorn is definitely in trouble. But there is an explosive mine. He is chasing him down all the time. Can Aragorn get away? Atelas, 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 Atelas. Oh my goodness, he didn't use Atelas. You see, the power spike is very important. You know, like Gandalf the White from the Spellbook of Gondor or the Andriel Sword from the Spellbook of Rohan. Because other than that, your heroes are not going to have nearly as much impact. You need to boost their damages. That's why those power points are extremely essential to turn your weak hero into a mighty superman. Six power points collected. Now he has enough for the freezing rain. He might also go for the uh, field of fires, which again is not going to do much for you because he has only one single meal outside, and that's not worth it. But I'm assuming we're going to see many, many bombs from Isengard. And bombs are crazy amount of damage dealers, guys. They can even one-shot Aragorn almost, you know? Like three of them are able to kill Balrog in no time as well. Freezing rain is now av available for Isengard. This Gondor is gonna make a move soonish, I believe. He has many, many trebuchet. Finally moving on. Firestone upgrade purchase on them. In the HD edition, what we are using, we are not able to see the graphical change. You see that now? You will see now what I'm trying to say. You see? You don't see the Firestone. Like what you normally would see in the normal Battle for Middle Earth version. But in the HD edition, they actually kind of messed this up, to be honest. Which is kind of unfortunate. But I'm still using it because I like the overall uh, textures from the HD edition. I think that looks just much more uh, dope. Aragorn has to be revived. Legolas has been killed for the third time, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even more than that. I was able to see only three of these times. Tyrion is almost level two. Level four is a massive power spike for Rohan. Glorious Charge is gonna make those Rohirrim archers and Rohirrim almost invincible. They will become extremely tanky. And not only that, they will also be more stronger in terms of damage output. And of course, the main thing for me is they don't they, they don't get slowed down when they are charging in the, into the enemy lines. Gandalf is on the hand. Many, many ballistas for the protection. Saruman is back on the field. He's only level 5. He was not able to get any experience just yet. Cripple Gandalf. This Lord is a Gandalf hunter, boys. Easter Light will be used on Saruman. He's getting also knocked back. Knocked down and taken out. Just like that. Spear throw. Big commitment, does he have heal? Elvin Wood will be used to nullify leadership bonuses. Gandalf is gonna be taken down. And yeah, now Rohan can peel back. Now Rohan can peel back. Did actually Theodore get experience for that? Yeah, go away from the explosive mine, I'm telling you. Explosive mine can actually be very dangerous, you know what I'm saying? Farami is also being chased down. Elmia is faster than Farami. Indeed, Elmia and Gandalf are the fastest heroes on foot, on horse, you know? They are faster than anything else. Who can ride at least. So again, Theoden is only one and a half levels away from getting the Glorious Charge unlocked. This Rohan has to revive his Aragorn. That's more important than Legolas in my opinion. Because of the leadership. And I believe 
Here's also now the Andori Sword, right? Yeah, here's the power points for Andori Sword. In the meantime, this Gondor player was actually, you know, sieging the other Gondor player. One part of the wall has been broken. And remember that this Gondor player at the top left side was already losing his Gandalf. That means protection without Gandalf is kind of tough. Yes, even now some combos on the field to protect those trebuchet. Very, very nice. The siege is crazy, my dude. Two parts of the wall broken just like that. In the meantime, the Rohan has a level 10 Rohirrim archer on the field. That's a massive unit. Saruman has to get revived for the second time. Isengard is moving on now to the Gondor at the top right side with the explosive mine. You can one-shot the walls if they are not empowered from the Numenorian Stormworker. Parami is taking a shot on his face. <laughs> and Easter Light will be used to just kill more units. Level 7 Gandalf. And the Gandalf is still dead. And by the way, this Gondor player might be able to take down the Citadel before Gandalf will be able to rejoin the battlefield. Now we have a Siege Wars because, you know, Trebuchet against Trebuchet. Where is the explosive mine? I don't want to miss the action, boys. Does he have fire on them? No, he has no fire on them. What is the Isengard player planning to do? Freezing Rain is going to be used. You want to participate in this fight. Trample is incoming right after the Freezing Rain has been used to make sure that they are losing all the leadership bonuses. Isengard might be able to save his friend Zed. And again, you know, this might also happen because like you are attacking one guy, but then you are being attacked from the second guy at the same time. This, of course, is like always going to happen in the free for all games. Uh, but it's like, you know, it is how it is. Gandalf is healthy, and again, there is nothing that can actually kill him right now because Lourdes is not nearby. Lourdes is just getting revived. He's inside the base, chilling, doing nothing else. Rohir marches, they have no leadership now, but again, freezing rain, you get, oh, you go on enemy land, you leave the land, and boom, now they are shining bright like a diamond once again. They have leadership back on the menu, boys. Level 10, Rohir marches with Elme and Theodin leadership. Holy explosive mine, he's hiding them. Oh, I like that. You can actually hide them a little bit, you know, the explosive mines. When you deploy them, you can put them maybe near to the trees, which will be almost impossible for the opening player to see them. And then whenever they get close, you just use like one crossbow man with fire, make it boom, you know, and you can blow up the entire enemy army just like with one explosive man. And hopefully we will be able to see that also in this game. <laughs> would be kind of funny. Okay, this Rohan has not the money to revive his Legolas. Now he has the money. His level 5 would be not bad if you revive him because he's going to be a great choice when it comes to kill the enemy heroes like Gandalf, Lord Saruman, or the other Gandalf, Faramir. This Gandalf is back on the field. That's good. But this Ro this Condor has last has almost lost 3 walls, you know? But again, on this map, in Mirkwood, in a free-for-all match, you get faster money. That means he should be also able... Boom, 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 boom. You see the burst damage? Spear throws. Like, this Rohan is designed to counter Gandalf, you know what I'm saying? Because the second Gandalf is going to approach, he's going to be shot on the face with the Rohirrim Arches, with the Spear Thrower of Elvin and Elmi at the same time. And when Legolas is on the field, he can also use Hog Strike. So there is so much damage potential for a crazy amount of bursts, you know? This Gondor is making a move now. With the Gondor Knights, he looks like, it looks like he want to go for the Isengard base, which is, yeah... Greatly protected with Ballistas inside the base. Level 3 furnaces around the base, or inside the base rather. So it's gonna be hard for the Gonzo player to deal the damage he's looking for. But this game isn't decided yet. Anything can happen and, any, and anyone can win. Level 10, I mean, Rohan is looking pretty strong. Now he has Anduril Sword too. That's gonna make Aragon to a one-man army himself. He's going to be impossible to deal with. Like, you will need a full army to be able to take him down. Or explosive mines, that will do. <laughs> We will see about that. They also cost a lot though. And he's just gonna spam them, I think, everywhere. And I will I wanna watch that. I wanna see what what we will uh, be able to you know witness in this game. Because to, to see the full potential, you know, potentially from the uh, explosive mines from Isengard. Because if the players are not paying attention, explosive mine might them might mess them up big time. He has not even the money to revive his Gandalf yet. That's pretty bad. I, do, I didn't even notice that he lost the Gandalf. My bad, guys. Sorry for that. I missed it. All right. Let's take, take a look into the power points, shall we? So Max, the green Gondor player at the top right side, he has almost the power points he needs for the, for the Cloud Break. Like, he needs seven. He has almost six. And you can't go for the Eagles when you don't choose the Alvin allies or the Rohirrim allies, you know? That's the only possible way you can reach to the Eagles. You cannot go for the Eagles from the Gandalf to right. That's not possible. Marie, the Rohan player, has heal, draft, Andrew Sword and Alvin Wood. He has three power points collected on top of that. He is three power points away from getting the end summon or four power points away from getting the Cloud Break unlocked. Many, many explosive mines. 
Zed, the gun that played at the top left side. He has three power points, almost four power points available after the guns off in the Elven Allies. That means he's only two and a half power points away from getting the Eagle Summon unlocked. And last but not least, the Isengard play at the bottom right side. He has seven power points after the Freezing Rain. That means he's 12 and a half power points away from getting the Balrog Summon. And look at that, he's placing mines literally everywhere. So I want to keep an eye on the bottom right side to not miss the action. Because one mine can actually... I'm, I'm assuming the Gandalf got even killed by an explosive mine. But I, unfortunately, when you're watching a replay, you can't, you know, skip... You can't go back, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's using the Lightning Sword on Boromir, but he's face tanking the shots from the trebuchet. Gandalf, he has to be used. That's a bad thing. Like, the heal was just wasted there for no reason. And he was not even able to kill Boromir, by the way. So it's not worth it. Now we gotta see the full potential of the Rohan army. Uh, but he has no glorious charge, of course. That's like what's missing. He can just fight this, right? Yeah, just fight this. He has, you know, explosive mines. He needs to always keep an eye on them. Saruman will get blown away, guys. Saruman has no chance. And you get 300 for killing Saruman. But he was able to get a beautiful, you know, uh, fireball off. Gandalf is coming now from behind. Aragorn is crippled. Uh, Theoden is crippled down, which is the right goal. You want to cripple the weak heroes like Theoden and Eomir. Because that's going to give you the chance to, you know, kill them 100%. Trampling, in, trample is incoming into the crossbow man with the Rohirrim, Rohirrim arches, Aragorn level 5 still. Elme on the other side is level almost 7. The Skandalf might look for an opportunity because losing Theorin means you lose a big chunk of your leadership in terms of armor and damage. Elven allies will be used. This one is also from the Gondor player Z, who is the player from the top left side. His Skandalf is on the hand, but he has to watch out. He has to watch out. Do you see the damage from the Rohirrim arches? They are hitting like a truck, my dude. Lourdes? Has Cripple on cooldown, Explosive Mine is incoming, and he's using the Elaine deal now with Aragorn. And Gandalf is almost back. Officer arrives precisely when he means to. And yeah, of course, Theoden needs to be revived, and Legolas is also being revived at the same time. Now, again, from the Outlook leadership of Elmia, you are able to get so much money. He was only able to get 300 from killing Saruman. So it's like really valuable the longer the game goes on. Spear throw, but it's not enough to kill him. Eowyn was also on the hand. She can also use the Disguise, <laughs> which can turn her, uh, turn her into a look of Rohirrim, and your opponent won't recognize that, you know? He won't be able to see the Eowyn. Again, it's kind of a useless ability, I don't like that, but it's existing in all Battle for Middle-earth games, you know? Give him one, two, and Rise of the Witch King. This Gondor player was trying to go inside the jeans, but this Gondor player on the other side was already able to repair the wall, so it's not going to be possible. Isengard uh, has to revive his Saruman. Lourdes is, of course, on the field. Lourdes is the anti-hero. You could see yourself. In this game, he was able to kill so many you know, heroes. Cripple them, kill them, cripple them, kill them, cripple them, kill them. As easy as that. He was also able to successfully fight for the map control. He will be keeping those ballistas inside his castle for greater protection. While he's going to spam also more and more explosive mines all the time. Clawbreak. This one is from Max Mark from the top right side. Clawbreak is actually pretty nice against uh, other cavalry units because what it does is besides stunning the enemy units or, you know, lowering their armor, it's also slowing them down, which gives you the catch potential like you could have seen yourself. Explosive Mine is here. Level 6 Warp Rider has been taken down. But Explosive Mine... Oh my goodness! Did you guys see the shenanigan? I didn't even see the crossbow man. I believe the Gondor player couldn't see them as well. And the Gondor Knights are blown away just like that. Lourdes is going to get in safety, though. Heal has been used, but I believe Lourdes is in a fine spot. Like, this guy is playing a very interesting game. He has no Pikeman. He has just Crossbowman just to make it boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> Beautiful. That's a massive Rohan army, though. What a fiesta game this is. Legolas is here. Aragorn is here. Tilden is here. Elmer is here. Elvin is here. And do you see the explosive mines the Rohan plays to always pay attention about the steps he's taking? You know, close to the Isengard piece which is under protection of these explosive mines who are deployed, in, who can be deployed anywhere on the map. So you can hide them eventually. And if, you don't, if you don't pay attention, you might lose your entire army, including your heroes, in like two seconds. I mean, you know, what I would recommend you to do is hide them in like places where it's going to be almost impossible for the opening player to see them. And this, of course, is like the trees. For example, right here, you see it's like a good camouflage technique, you know? Six power points only from the Balrog summon, ladies and gentlemen. On the other side, Max, the Gondor player, needs seven for the Army of the Dead. Margie, the Rohan player, needs around nine and a half power points for the Army of the Dead. And Zed needs half a power point for the Eagle. It means he's ten and a half power points away from his own Army of the Dead. 
And again, Army of the Dead and Balrog are both game-changing, game-winning abilities in the game. And Balrog would be even having a bit more a bit, a bit more impact in this game, definitely. As he's able to fully kill a castle himself. However, if you don't know, Gonzo Faction is able to build a base which we call anti-Balrog base, you know? So basically you can make a base with full trebuchet inside and outside of, you know, surrounding your own walls with that. And that's gonna mean that the second Balrog is going to jump inside your base, he will be shot on his face from multiple trebuchet at the very same time and he will be bursted down eventually in like 5 seconds, you know what I'm saying? And then you will get also lots of power points from that because killing Balrog will reward you big time in Battle for Middle Earth 1. It will raise your power points up to the sky. So, Freezing Rain has been used, but again, this is not going to have too much impact in this game, definitely, because there is Tainted Land on the field. Again, all Rohan has to do is step on it, or any other Alvin would from the opening players, and boom, you have your leadership back on the field, just like it's at. Saruman, level 6. Again, Saruman has no chance of, you know, st <laughs> stepping up against the Rohirrim matches or against Gandalf, because Easter Light from Gandalf, as you have seen many, many times in this game, is able to burst him almost 100% damage. So, killing Saruman after the Easter Light is quite easy. All you gotta do is hit him like twice with the Gondor Knights, and that's it. And again, he was able to break three parts of the wall, but Gandalf is gonna be there very, very soon. With the help of Gandalf, he might be able to defend himself. However, he has not many Gondor Knights up on the field anymore. Now the Siege Wars has, been, has begun. That's a massive Rohan army. I don't know why he's playing so carefully. What is the level of Theorin, the king of Rohan? Almost level 4 for the Glorious Charge. Now he is co committing against the trebuchet, and of course they are very vulnerable against the uh, Gondor Knights. Gondor Knights are going to be at least, you know, indeed able to one-shot them. But the combination is very dangerous, you know, because he has Faramir who is level 8. And Wanding Arrow from Faramir is going to hurt Gandalf as well. So Wanding Arrow plus the Easter Light combination is almost going to be able to kill the Gandalf fully. So shoot him a couple of times and use Wanding Arrow and Easter Light at the same time. He's going to use it. You see, it's a good chunk. Not a lot, of course, but it's like a good uh, combination with the Easter Light from your own Gandalf. Alvin allies, we have a fight going on now. This Gandalf has to respect the fact that there is a Faramir shooting him down all the time. And even Boromir is almost level 4. But... Heal? What is going on now? What, what this Gandalf was Easter Lighting? I'm actually confused now. The Eagles are on the hand. He might use the Lightning Sword, though. Just use Lightning Sword, otherwise you will lose your Gandalf. You will lose your Gandalf anyway. He has no heal. There is no way Gandalf can outfly or outrun the Eagles, and the Eagles were able to take him down. Fly, Shadow Fax, but not, don't fly that fast. And Boromir has been taken on as well. Actually, this Gondor player, Zed, he was able to get so many power points unlocked. He has like almost four power points unlocked from the single fight, killing Boromir and of course also Gandalf. He's only six and a half power points away from his army of the dead. In the meantime, the Isengard player was also able to get some power points unlocked. He's only four power points and a quarter away from his Balrog of Morgoth summon. This Rohan player is kind of playing it very carefully, which I can understand, because he has to respect the fact that there, are, there might be some explosive mines hiding around the trees, which can mess him up big time, you know? Just kill them before... Boom! Oh, nah, I was expecting him to fireball the explosive mine, but you can't do that if they are not deployed. Just deploy them. The Rohan play is playing so carefully. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Where is Lourdes when we need him? Did he lose Lourdes? Yeah, he lost the Lourdes, actually. On the other side, uh, Max Smart is only 4.5 power points away from his own army of the dead. And Marie needs 7 after the Cloud Break. Cloud Break is available for both the Rohan player and also the Gondor player at the top right side. But I I'm assuming that Isengard is going to be the first player who will be getting his army of the dead unlocked. We have even Gimli on the field. Of course, Gimli, level 1, can't do much. He needs at least level 3 for the leap attack or even level 7 for the slayer. Level 7 is going to make him also to a very big threat, you know, because he can use the slayer and outrun lords or any other infantry hero in the entire game and you can out damage most of them at the same time. The only hero who might be able to fight against you is of course Aragorn with Anduril's sword and Blade Master. But any other hero will be, oh, fireball on his face, but he has glorious charge for death and glory. There was a bad Glorious Charge. He should have waited for the Rohirrim to arrive. He was only able to Glorious Charge like a couple of them. If even Meriadoc Brandybuck, but Tilden has been taken down from this many towers shooting at his face. Oh, this explosive mine, please. But I believe Rohan is paying attention. Just make it boom now. You can actually kill also the enemy structures with that. Boom. 
Lourdes is gonna get blown up. Oh, nice uh, one. More explosive mines. Heal has been used. What is going on? How much does this Isengard need? Actually, not much. He has now the power points he needs. The explosive mine was able <laughs> to actually kill the own siege wargs. Friendly fire is on, by the way. He might use Balrog here defensively on the Rohirrim Archers. Let's see if this is gonna be the keys or not. He might need that because he might be lost after, uh, you know, if he doesn't do that. We will see. Because Rohan army is just too powerful now. Rohan is a very strong, beautiful Visa Plus on your face, son. And Arago Gandalf 450 from Outlaw Leadership from Eomir will be taken down. And that's what I'm talking about. But ladies and gentlemen, the summon of the Ancient Demon will be now used. Where, though? Did I, do I miss it? Where did he summon him? What? Where is the Balrog head? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm blind, sorry. Balrog will be summoned for the, for the Rohan base. And uh, this Rohan... Yeah, he's almost there. He has now the power points. Army of the Dead. Unlock it and use it on the Balrog. V what? Why would you go for the Elven allies, bro? Are you out of your mind? Like, he has 10 power points after the Cloud Break and he chooses to go for the Elven allies? What is this Balrog doing? Is it drunk? <laughs> <laughs> what absolute fiesta game this is. I think the Balrog won't be able to finish off the castle, guys. He won't be able to finish off the castle, or will he? I don't know, man. That's gonna be close. Breathfire now has to hit all the three buildings at the same time. Oh, he will be able to do that, yeah? And again, that's unbelievable. The Rohan could have saved himself, but Mari has been defeated after losing his base. The, the, you know, regardless how many units you have on the field, you will lose when you lose your castle. And for whatever reason, he chose the Alpine Alliance when he had enough power points to unlock his army of the dead from the spellbook. What is this absolute clown fiesta game? Crazy stuff. And if Rohan would have survived this, he had the biggest win condition. He had Glorious Charge, he had Aeomi Leadership, he has Aragorn, very, very strong hero, Legolas, highly level. Dude, what else do you want to win this game? But all he had to do really is use army of the dead <laughs> to kill the Balrog, you know what I'm saying? And that would be it. This Isengard would be defeated, he would be in a good spot. And the, the Gondor players, they are still kind of far away from the, you know, not really far away, but still like 3 power points, almost 4 power points for the under, other Gondor player is quite a lot. Now this Isengard player is kind of out of the game, of course. He has not much left on the field anymore. He has to revive his Saruman and Lourdes, and that's gonna make him broke. He has not even the money for reviving Saruman at this point. But he has the Vestation, which he might use a couple of times to get back into the game. The problem is with the Lumber Mills is... Uh, that you will run out of trees eventually the longer the game goes on the less value you will get from the lumber mills that's why at some point of the game you might need to go for the transition into demolishing this building and replacing it with a slaughterhouse instead you know what i'm saying now the gondor player has a window in which you can punish this isengard player because he has no lords he has no units on the field and unlike the last times he has not even a siege wars for recruiting more explosive mines cloud break but again he has nothing to defend himself like like, that's it, you know? No pikemen, no heroes. Lourdes needs still a lot of time until he will be able to rejoin the battlefield. And even then, like, how we want to kill Gandalf when you have nothing else but Lourdes? Lourdes cannot fight him. And of course, this Gondor player is going to get more and more power points from this fight. He's, like, really close for unlocking his own army after that. And again, when you unlock your army after that, I believe you should not use it in this base anymore because you don't need to do that. You can just use it on the enemy base at the top left side, which might uh, get you to win. Because all you gotta do is summon the army after that, kill his trebuchet, Gondor Knights, and Gandalf, and you are good to go. Now here's the army after that. Will he summon it offensively against the Isengard base? That's a big question. I wouldn't recommend it. Oh, but that's an eagle summon now from the opposite Gondor player. Eagle, one of them has been one-shotted. Very early heal from Max, though. Very, very early for no reason. He was almost full health. Like, is that blast? He's level 10 now, but he will die to the Eagle. In Cloud Break, uh, I mean, uh, the Cripple has been used, and the Eagle was able to finish him off. And, like, of course, it's going to give also power points now to Zed. He's almost there as well. He's, like, really close to unlock his own army up to that. You know what I'm saying? Now... We have reached a stage of the game in which everybody has like access to ar either Army of the Dead or the Balrog Summon. And the thing is, Army of the Dead is better when it comes to kill enemy armies. And Balrog is better when it comes to kill enemy castle. Army of the Dead will be used offensively inside the castle. You might be able to destroy the Citadel, which again will buy you enough time uh, to deny him to get Gandalf back on the field. 
and Balrog is almost back up as well. So the thing is, if you don't know, you can not kill the gate when the gate is opened, which is a bug in the game, but that's like how it works. The only way you can kill the gate with army after that is when the opening player is closing the gate. That's the only way. And of course, you can see yourself, army after that is not the best summon when it comes to destroy enemy buildings. You will not be able to destroy anything but the citadel because the levels, uh, the buildings are now highly leveled. Level 3 blacksmiths are extremely tanky. They have, just like the furnaces, 6,000 health. I mean, furnaces have even more than that, right? Let me check. Furnace level 3 has 6,500 health. So it's tankier. All right. The Balrog will be summoned on the Gondor base, though. Breath fire. Not the best breath fire. What is Gandalf doing? You cannot fight against Balrog, dudes. Fire with him. Watch this. Pew! <laughs> now, turn in, turn on him and use the Lightning Sword. He's gonna use Lightning Sword. Can he kill Balrog, though? Look, Gandalf's damage against Balrog, my dudes. Oh my goodness. Holy quacamole. Is there a light him now? Is there a light him? And Balrog is gonna be taken down! Oh my goodness. Did you see did you see what he did? He was dancing around the Rosie because if you cast a spell with Gandalf and he's using the fire whip as you are casting, you will get one shot it. But if you don't do anything, if you just move around and he's gonna use fire whip on you, then your shield bubble is gonna activate and that's gonna block a little bit of the damage. You will almost be one shotted, but you will still be alive. The Gondor player was able to defend himself, which is massive. And after killing Balrog, this Gandalf is almost also level 10. Just like this other Gandalf. So we have two Gandalfs level 10. We have Balrog, we have Army of the Dead. What else do we want from a game? Rohan has been defeated now for a quite long time. And the only player who was not using Army of the Dead yet is Max. He's waiting, which is kind of okay. You need to be patient with that. You don't want to, you know, waste the Army of the Dead just like Zed did. Because his Army of the Dead, I mean, did not do anything but kill the Citadel. You know what I'm saying? So now, if the Gondor players want to win this game, they need to defeat Isengard first. Because the next Balrog summon might be enough to... Kill one of the castles. So what is he doing? He's getting some crossbowmen on the field. Uh, you also need to fight for the map control. Uh, Zed, the Gondor player at the top left, was doing a good job. He was actually getting all these settlements under his control, which is going to make sure that he is always having enough money to replace all the buildings and heroes and units. He will be keep losing all the time. So, uh, Lourdes is here. Industry has been used. And Saruman is finally getting revived. And again, Isengard can just use multiple times devastation, and that's going to give him a lot of money. He has now finally some pikemen on the field too, as a counter. Lightning Sword will be used on the Gondor Knight's clean one here. He was able to kill the full battalion. And unlike this Gondor player, uh, Zed, this Gondor player doesn't have too much money. And also, which is kind of confusing, is that they have like almost the same colors. You know what I'm saying? Max is going to get his own Gandalf on the field soonish. The thing is, a level 10 Gandalf will have like a really long revive time. So you need to be extremely patient to until Gandalf is going to be able to rejoin the battlefield. This Lord is also almost level 7, but again, Isengard will fall off. Gondor is the best faction in the late game when it comes to unlock all the power points from the spellbook because you have so much additional summons like Eagle Summon, Rohan Summon, Elven Summon, Cloud Breaking, while evil factions like Mordor or Isengard, they have only one summon and that's the Balrog. Which is of course the best summon in the game when it comes to win the game. But it's exhausting if you have to deal with so many summons at the same time. Like Rohan allies, they can rotate between the summons all the time. I mean Gondor pretty much can like summon a full army like with power points exclusively. I want to see the War of Power of course. I want to see that. Alright, this Gondor player is having almost kind of back on the, on the menu, boys. That's good. He's also holding on his army of the dead now for a quite long time. We might see even another rotation between the 20 power points from Isengard and 10 power points from the Gondor factions. So I believe, yeah, Zed has almost his army of the dead back up. And look at this, you see that? It's going to be up with the Eagles, Rohan and Elves at the very same time. And that's what I'm trying to say. Like, you can summon a full army at pretty much the same time. He's going to use the Warm Tongue on the Elven allies and Gandalf got crippled down. He's gonna miss it and Eagle Summon now will be used to kill Saruman. But does he have heal? Yeah, he has heal. He has to use it now. What of Power maybe? He's going to use uh, the Easter Light on Lourdes. Now he has to use Water of Power if he wants to be able to survive. Otherwise Lourdes is gonna be able to kill him. But Eagles are here to save the day. And that's the power of Gondor. What can I say, you know? <laughs> Eagles, Elves, Rohan. And he didn't even use the Rohan allies yet. He didn't even use the War of Power or the Army of the Dead just yet. And by the way, keep in mind that Army of the Dead uh, can be killed from the War of Power of Gandalf. 
So if you're ever gonna make the mistake to summon Army of the Dead on your face, all you gotta do is press the uh, W button on your keyboard to activate your War of Power. The Nostra Crest is able to one-shot the Army of the Dead in no time. Big commitment now. Army of the Dead will be now used also from Zed on the Isengard base. And he has no heroes. Cloud Break is actually going ham now. This Condor player is saying, okay, you know what? I want to also party speed. But the Isengard base is falling apart. There is not a single Furnace level 3 anymore. That means the durability and the defense of the base is also very bad. Just call the Rohan allies. And just focus on the buildings and Isengard. This way will be defeated. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Use Nostakras. Nostakras. Oh, why? Why, 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 why? He could have used the... He wanted to go for the Visa Blast. It's a mistake. Just press the button. Spam it. And maybe you could have done it. Again, the burst damage is crazy. So you need to be fast. Because if they get the chance to attack your Gandalf, you will be losing your Gandalf also in no time. Army of that having like a crazy amount of DPS, you know? And now it's time to enter the Gondor Castle. So what, 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 what actually happened is the Zed, the Gondor player at the top left, Zed, made a mistake. He went fully on the Isengard base. That left them kind of open for a potential attack from the other Gondor player, Max Smart who is just using the opportunity and the chance to show his quality by entering the Gondor base and taking out every single building, including the, including the Gandalf. In this way, Zed will be defeated. And now it's a 1v1 situation between Isengard, who has a Citadel building up and nothing else in the base, no heroes, <laughs> against the Gondor player, who has now Balrog in his base. So the Balrog can win the game for Dunedain. Let's see. Breathfire? Dude, the Balrog can win the game because there is an unspoken golden rule in the free-for-all games. And the rule is that you are not allowed to, be, to buy a second base. What is this Balrog doing? He's going to use... Why? Oh, Gandalf. It was Gandalf. I didn't even pay attention. He was trying to enter Gondor, but Balrog is like, no, sir, not. <laughs> you are not allowed to do that. And can this Balrog actually win the game? That's going to be crazy, my dude. Like, look at the Isengard base. He has nothing. But he didn't finish off the... What is the Balrog doing? Breath fire. Use the fire whip. Fire whip. Fire whip. Fire whip him. Dude. Okay. Oh, no. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. No way. I cannot believe that. <laughs> what an absolute clown fears the ending. He could have won this game, but now he has no way of entering the base because the base is not broken. Like, every wall is still on the field and he can just close the gate. He, the Isengard player has no siege weapons. Now is the time for the, for the Gondor player to shine. I mean, but look at the minimap. Do you see that? Gondor player was able to get almost every single settlement under his control. So he will have, even though he lost, like, all his base, look his money. He has still over 4,000, you know what I'm saying? He has also the Eagle Summon unlocked now from the Spellbook if he wants to. With which he can potentially commit on the Isengard base. You want to be fast though. You don't want to give Isengard too much time. Especially not when it comes to reload, uh, reload the Balrog. Again, in free-for-all games, there is a golden rule. And this rule is don't buy a second castle. Very important. Especially uh, between those players. Because they are kind of playing free-for-all since many, many years. You know what I'm saying? And you can see yourself that free-for-all game is like a little bit different in compared to a 1v1 or 2v2 situation. Because the playstyle is like, of course, depending on the fact that you are having like more than one opponent you need to you need to fight against, pretty much. That's why you cannot build and try to go for a 1v1 situation. Because if you make the mistake that you try to fight only against this guy, for example, then this guy or even this guy at the top left side might also attack you at the same time. So at any point of the game, you want to make sure that you have always some protection inside your castle for the worst case scenario. Now we have a bunch of level 10 Gondor Knights on the field. Uh, he's going to just wait for the power points. Army of the Dead is going to be unlocked a bit faster than the Balrog Summon. And with the Army of the Dead, he will be able to get inside the base, use Army of the Dead to kill the Pikemen and the combos, and then just use your Eagles and your Rohirrim Summon by the time to finish off the Castle of Isengard and be victorious. Unless he's going to mess it up. But I cannot believe that Gondor was not defeated there. It was very unfortunate, you know? He was actually kind of cancelling the auto attack on the blacksmith multiple times. He was messing up there a little, a little bit too much, in my opinion. Again, Gondor was just buying his Gandalf back for 3,000. Was filling up his base again with full blacksmiths and a stable. And he's still having a great amount of resource income. Just because right now he has like 8 to 10 farms outside. 
which is quite a lot. Isengard is trying to reach out to this trebuchet. He will be able to kill them one by one. He has still like one or two inside the castle. Now he has one around the castle. Two around the castle. Freezing Rain is going to be used. But again, Gondor doesn't care because Gondor is a faction that doesn't rely. But it's Lourdes doing Moonwalking. Lourdes is throwing the sword and taking down Faramir. The captain of Gondor couldn't show his quality once again. Level 8 Lourdes now. Cloudbreak has been used, but there is no commitment. Why would you use that? Boromir, the captain of Gondor, is running for his life. He's lucky that Cripple is on cooldown. Otherwise, Lourdes is going to be also able to take him down. Gandalf is almost back on the field. And Balrog Summon is almost ready too. Dude, that can be actually pretty fiesta. That's why I'm saying, like, Gondor has to make a move. And he has to make it now. Because the Balrog is able to win as in yet, the game. He has lots of Gondor Knights, though. Yes, lots of Condor Knights with the combination of Eagle Summon and the Army of the Dead. And again, this should be enough to kill the full castle of Isengard eventually in no time. Isengard is just waiting patiently for the Balrog Summon. And Balrog Summon is going to be actually available sooner than Gandalf is going to be on the field. So just use Balrog here. Oh, that's going to be a base trade, am I right? Let's see who will be able to finish off the base from the opening player faster. Because that's all that matters now. Because the question, who is going to win this? We don't know. We will just find out. Rohan Allies summon. Eagle summon. Like so much summon with lots of Gondor Knights. Balrog will be special summon in the meantime. Breathfire, he was missing this table. You need to always take a step like closer to the to the top side. To make sure that you get the full value of the Balrog. Which again, normally is able to, you know. But yeah. Isengard base in the meantime has been taken down. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot believe that. Was pretty fun game to watch. The first free for all game on our on our channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and also comment below if you want to see more free for all games in the future on this channel. Commentary, but also own gameplay. I would like to make some of the, some of them for you guys. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves and as always, keep hitting like a track and stay beyond standards. Peace out.